please make sure you subscribe. Smash that button even if we agree to disagree. Good evening and greetings everyone and welcome back to Blogging Tawheed. As you can see from the screen, this is a response to a recently posted video by Godlogic Apologetics where a lady challenged him that women get beat in every religion. And successfully and immaturely, he repeated the same story circulated by the Christian apologists that Islam allows men to beat women. Ironically, I just recently gave a lecture about this same topic, and today we'll go to an even deeper explanation of his claims, mainly the Quranic verses in question that supposedly allow men to beat women and the child marriage issue. But before I respond, I would like to put a claim out there for everyone, Christians and Muslims. This video is for educational purposes as well as responding to the lies and the fear-mongering the Christian apologists use as part of the smear campaign against Islam. I am not responding to this ignorant person, however, from a defensive position. I am responding to enlighten and warn the Christians against his lies. My message to my Christian brothers and sisters, please allow yourself to listen with a sound heart, regardless of the theological differences, and leave emotions to the side. I know that the majority of Christians automatically associate everything wrong and immoral with Islam based on the narratives such as this self-proclaimed Christian with zero academic background misleading people and spreading the lies and they get paid for attacking Islam it's the largest paid media propaganda if you want to be famous and get paid book or money just start attacking Islam and write books about Islam and Jihad you don't even have to have any qualifications he speaks as if he is an expert in the field of textual criticism and linguistics like a fool who takes no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions and lies. The biggest dilemma, you, the viewers, the Christians, are deceived and lied to. You're thinking they're defending Christianity. Therefore, anything said against Islam becomes your dopamine. It gets even worse when this dopamine acts as a sedative agent as this Christian apologists blame Islam and the Quran for every single man in the entire planet that beats his wife they blame Islam for every 68 seconds when a woman gets beat sexually assaulted and raped in America they blame Islam for every gunshot fired in America they literally blame Islam for every breath they take and finally, they inject a bolus of this dopamine by telling the average Christians, like you, look, Islam is evil. See, Islam is a cult. Look, Islam encourages the beating, the rape, the killing, and the marriage of children, etc. The question you have to ask yourself is, why are they attacking Islam? What does Islam offer that they are afraid and scared of? Is Islam really the solution to all the world's problems? You have to find out on your own. No one can do the thinking for you. So please, think. Let's play the video and see what he has to say. That's it. So when I say women get beat in Islam, I'm using Quran and Hadith sources. When I say Men are allowed to sleep with little girls. Religion. I'm what using Quran and Hadith verses. Women get That's beat it. in every religion. No, not in Christianity. Oh, in, in Christianity, that in Christianity that's not the case. And let me are you delusional? There's so she logically says women get beat in every religion. Don't you agree with that statement? Do you agree that women get beat in every religion? 
Where are my Christian sisters to defend this lady statement? In case you don't agree with her, that women get beat in every religion, that's disappointing. And that absolutely makes you a prejudice, a hypocrite, a dogmatic, and a narrow-minded person. He responds, not in Christianity. In Christianity, that's not the case. She responds, are you delusional? Now, again, where are my faithful Christian sisters? To contradict, contradict his statement and confirm that Christian women get beat just like any women in the world. And that women get beat in every religion, not only in Islam. I am calling on my Christian sisters to respond with honesty as women who have endured the beating, the abuse, and the rape at some point of their lives. This right here is complete ignorance. This is complete insanity. I'm asking every Christian in the world, does that make sense to you? Do women get beat only in Islam but not in Christianity or any other religions in the world? I'm asking you, the Christian people. He said, women do not get beat in Christianity. In Christianity, that's not the case. Now, I'm hoping maybe he misspoke and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But knowing him very well, actually, he intentionally means to spread the lies against Islam. Now, as a human being, not as a Muslim, any man who beats a woman or abuses a woman emotionally and physically is a coward, regardless of religion, ethnicity, race, or ideology. Regardless if it happens in America, Afghanistan, England, Nigeria, Canada, Saudi Arabia, France, etc. This dude lacks the basics of logic and knowledge pure filth and ignorance. If you see a man beating his wife, are you going to assume that his religion orders him to do so? Like seriously, what type of evil thinking is this? If I say that Christians beat their wives or girlfriends, which there are some that do, we can't deny it, does that mean Christianity order or allow Christian men to beat their wives or girlfriends? As someone who is involved in the community services, worked as a humanitarian at the United Nations, traveled the world, a linguist fluent in seven languages, including Hebrew, Greek, and Arabic, studied not only theology but also medicine, understands the difference between culture and religion, and as someone who works in the healthcare settings, and done many research in the fields of women. I have dealt with many women who were beaten, assaulted, and raped on a daily basis. Am I going to associate this with Christianity? Of course not, unless I am a fool like this man right here. Again, we can't play this game. We can't simply say that Christianity or Islam is the cause. And this is where you're wrong about Islam. Otherwise. If you want to take the highway and stick to the Christian apologi uh, apologists narrative, I can adjust my response accordingly and blame Christianity. According to Pew Research Center, speaking about domestic violence, emotional abuse, control, and victimization nationally, etc., it says 22% of individuals assaulted by a partner at least once in their lifetime. 25%. 0.3% of individuals have perpetrated IPV. 40% of women reported aggressive abuse. 41% of women reported coercive abuse. African Americans have higher rates of male to female partner life uh, violence, MFPV. According to the National Center for Injury Prevention and Control, women experience about 4.8 million intimate partner uh, related physical assaults and rapes every year. Less than 20% of battered women sought medical treatment following an injury. 
43% of women report experiencing violent and abusive dating behaviors, including physical, sexual, digital, verbal, on and on. Every 68 seconds, another American woman is beaten, abused, and sexually assaulted. One out of every six American women has been the victim of an attempted or completed rape in her lifetime. 14.8% of those completed, 2.8% attempted. From 2009 to 2013, Child Protective Services agencies substantiated or found strong evidence to indicate that 63,000 children a year were victims of sexual abuse. A majority of children, victims are 12 to 17. Of victims under the age of 18, 30%, 34% rather, of victims of sexual assault and rape are under the age of 12. And 66% of victims of sexual assault and rape are age 12 and 17. I can go on and on, on and on. Now, as a civilized person, I would be a fool to link Christianity to domestic violence and societal issues because I know the difference. Similarly, the domestic violence that happens in the Muslim countries are not based on religious background. We have to be logic about these things. We have to be better people, uh, better as people. Just because you hate Islam and the Muslims based on what they say in the media, you can't let someone else like God Logic, Sam Shimon and David Wood tell you or decide what you should know. Otherwise, we would be blaming each other back and forth. This is why I encourage my Christian uh, sisters and brothers to develop an emotional intelligence to understand and differentiate between society and religion. Let's play some more of his nonsense. Little, that's the case in every, in every religion. Again, uh, no, you're missing the point again. No, show me, the show me the verse where it says why men beat your wives. Islam, like there's literally people all over. Show me the verse in the Bible what? where it says men, you can beat your wives. Show me that in the Bible, anywhere. I'll leave, I'll, 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 I'll spit on the Bible if you show me that. Show me in the Bible where men, where husbands are allowed to beat their wives. I'll spit on that verse. You heard his response. He said, it's in the Quran and the Hadith, except that there is no such thing because Christian scholars tried this before and failed miserably. The verse he's referring to, saying that Muslim men are allowed to beat their wives, is in the Quran chapter and Nisa, the women, chapter 4, verse 34. Now, and Nisa, in Arabic, the women, are the adult women, the grown women. The English translation of the meaning of Surah and nisa or the women, says, and it's right here. Let me pull it up so we can, uh, you can look at it. It's on the screen, so that it's, it's right there. I hope you understand what that means. Scholars have done great job in trying to translate the meaning of the Quran, since the Arabic language is a Semitic language. I'm a Semitic, by the way. I cannot be anti-Semite. I cannot be on time myself. I'm a Semite as well. So the Arabic language is a Semitic language and therefore the English language does not have the equivalent of the majority of the words in Arabic. So it says here, I'm going to read it in Arabic as well as in the English. So the Arabic says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم فالصالحات قانتات حافظات للغيب ما بما حفظ الله والتي تخافون نشوزهن فعظوهن وهجروهن في المضاجع واضربوهن فإن أطعناكم فلا تبغوا عليهن سبيلا إن الله كان عليا كبيرا صدق الله العظيم The English translation is Men are caretakers, the protectors, maintainers of women, since Allah has made some, some of them excel over the others. 
and because of the wealth they have spent to support them. So the righteous women are obedient, devout, and guard the property and honor of their husbands in the absence of with their protection given by Allah. As for women who you fear rebellion, no shoes, this is what the word uh, no shoes in Arabic um, translates to, is the rebellion, disloyalty, and misconduct. It says, first, convince, admonish, or warn them. Second, leave them apart in beds, abstain or refuse to share bed with them. And finally, third, beat them lightly. Then, if they obey, do not seek a way against them. Surely Allah is the highest, the greatest. Okay. Now, if I want to end the debate, I could just read the next uh, verse. And that explains all, because they are linked. However, I will give you a detailed explanation from a linguistic point of view, so that you know that's not what it's meant. And that Islam does not promote beating women. So, there is a saying that says, and there is only a few people will understand what I mean, what it means. It goes like this. You can beat a woman with a stick without having to put your hands on her. I'll say it again. You can beat a woman with a stick without having to put your hands on her. Just saying for those who claim Muslim men are allowed to beat the daylight out of their wives. You can beat someone by ignoring them. You can beat someone by staying in your lane and pay them no attention. So, this verse is not telling a man how to beat his wife. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, says in the Hadith in Tirmidhi, it says, لا تضربوا إما الله Do not hit the women, they are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if God logic says, well, Islam is normal to the position to hit the women and discipline them, this goes against the Islamic and the Quranic and the Hadith and the narratives, exactly. This verse is not telling the man how to hit his wife, but rather it's telling the man how to defend himself against his wife. Okay? Because the narrative, the nature of man in general is that biologically we're prone to jump into an aggressive behavior. So in the Quranic uh, connection, there are three steps. First warn, then abstain from sexual intercourse, and then you can apply the striking. The strike. I hear you. The strike here bears the meaning of light beating and do not cause harm. But that's not what's meant in this verse. And even if we assume that's what it is meant in this verse, we can always justify this with the first stages prior to the beating. But that's not the case either. This is why Surah An-Nisa, or the chapter of women, has brought a great deal of misunderstanding about Islam and the status of women in this religion. It is a verse that is considered one of the most controversial verses in the Quran. And it's due to the mistranslation of Daraba, the word Daraba in Arabic, in this verse. In general, as a linguist myself, I see the improper or literal translation of the Quran is the main reason behind misinterpretations of this sacred text. Now, we'll move to the next window right here. If you look at this chart here, you'll see the word Daraba in Arabic. So, the word Daraba in Arabic has a range of meanings. So, the triliteral root of Daraba, as you can see here, it's highlighted. Daraba occurs 58 times in the Quran in two derived forms. So, 55 times as a form of I or verb, Daraba. Okay? And three times as a noun, Darb or the beating. Okay? So, these examples are intended as a guide to meaning. Because an Arabic word may have a range of meanings depending on the context. And this is again the linguistic miracle of in the Quran. There are 99 different words for love in Arabic. There are over 128 words of heart in the Quran. And each carry a different meaning based on the context. Now, obviously, I'm not going to read 
every single verse in this chart. But please refer to it and get yourself familiar with the different meanings of the word Daraba throughout the Quran. I'm only going to read a couple of examples so that you get the point. All right, let's read the first one where it says, as you can see here, it's highlighted. It says, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها. So the translation of Daraba in this verse is to set forth, and I'm going to click on it. And it says إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها. Translation is indeed Allah is not timid or shy to present an example or to set Fourth, so this is one of the examples of Daraba. I will leave the link in the comment section so you can check it out. I'll take another uh, example, just one more example to mean the travel. Okay, here is another one, another meaning for Daraba, and this is also Quranic grammar. It says. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا دربتم في الأرض فليس عليكم عليكم جناح صدق الله العظيم وإذا دربتم this is this comes the word is derived from daraba and it says and when you travel throughout this is the meaning of daraba again in this verse as I explained daraba has a range of meanings in the Quran and Allah سبحانه وتعالى used the word daraba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word daraba in uh, in Arabic which means to turn away from something the one meant in this verse is indignation and in disregard as a response of the man to the new shoes or disloyalty displayed by his wife this conforms to the extensive meaning of daraba which includes parting and separation Another meaning of Daraba, as you can see in the chart, is to turn away from or to dispense with. Therefore, when referring to the speech of someone who is speaking nonsense, like God logic, or to a piece or baseless writing, one may say, Fadribu ala al jidar. It's, it's an Arabic proverb that says, Fadribuhu ala al jidar, meaning throw it at the wall, which is an allegory for do not even pay attention to it. That's basically what the Daraba means. So the meaning of parting and separation for Daraba can also be applied to the verse under consideration. And a study of the verse can be done on this very basis because it has been mentioned that the term Daraba has been used here because it denotes a sudden parting. Remember, a sudden parting as opposed to a gradual one. Therefore, the Quran advises the husband who has unsuccessfully tried to censor his rebellious wife by two milder means to finally separate, to finally daraba from her. However, he should avoid any harshness towards her and patiently await for his action to have an effect. He should allow her to think over matters and to take steps towards what is best for her. Therefore, when interpreted in this manner or in this context, we can say that the verse means to say, if a woman shirks her responsibility and acts inappropriately, then the husband must attempt to remedy matters in the prescribed stages. You follow me? Okay, however, if we take the daraba here to mean striking, and we assume that the Quran requires that in such circumstances, the man should compel his wife to resume her duties and responsibilities by raising his hand to her so that she comes back to her senses. Then acting on this interpretation will probably have an adverse effect for many reasons. Reason number one, the books of uh, jurisprudence state that the slightest physical violence towards one's wife, if it bruises her skin, carries a penalty or a dia, and such an act of chastisement is not permitted for the man for any reason in Islam. 
Reason number two, usually physical discipline will only push the woman into a position of bitterness and animosity, especially when she realizes that the husband has used his last resort and can do no more to stop her. At this time, she may feel there is nothing more the husband can do direct at her. Reason number three, any physical action will usually result in an adverse reaction and may drive the woman to become even more entrenched and resolute in her misbehavior. This is especially the case for women who have a quarrelsome nature and who are more prone to antagonism than women of a calmer and more level-headed um, temperament. So the Quran, therefore, lends itself to a wide range of interpretation and indeed this is part of the miracle of this divine scripture for this reason the Quran shall endure for all time I am going to make a follow-up video on this specific topics with details because I realize I can't give justice to this topic in 30 minutes when I have other things to respond to now let's play the video and see what else he has to say I think we have already played the video where he says show me a verse in the Bible you delusional there's little that's the case like there's literally people all over show me the, the verse in the Bible wives. where it says men you can beat your wives show me that in the Bible anywhere I'll leave I'll 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 I'll, I'll, I'll spit on the Bible if you show Okay, so he says, show me a verse in the Bible where it says men are allowed to beat their wives. I'll spit on that Bible if you show me that. You know, my friend, as a Muslim, I would not spit, tear up, or burn the Bible, no matter how much I disagree with those unknown people who wrote the Bible. Matter of fact, no Muslim, and I am confident I am speaking on behalf of all the Muslims, no Muslim ever would do that because we respect the other's choice of faith. Before I bring up these verses from the Bible, I warn you that this might be graphic to some. As harsh as it may seem, this is the reality of the Bible, unfortunately. So first, let's talk about women and the authority of men up in them in the Bible. And obviously, I'm only reading a couple of examples. The rest, however, will be at the comment section to check it out. The Bible allows beating of people in general who commit wrong acts and the fools. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 Hatred stirs up trouble. I love overlooks love overlooks the wrongs that others do. If you have good sense it will show when you speak but if you are stupid you will be beaten with stick. So I will not read the entire verse. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 29 and 30. It says, A severe beating can knock all of the evil out of you. Proverbs 26, verse 2 and 4. It says, Horses and donkeys, again, I'm only reading the context. I don't want to waste time by reading the entire Verses, horses and donkeys must be beaten and bridled, and so must, must fools. Don't make a fool of yourself by answering a fool. So the beating here is open for anyone who is deemed to have evil in them, and or is acting stupid and is a fool. The Bible doesn't object to the concept of beating and disciplining of any individual who is in the wrong and who is deemed to be deserving to it. More about the beating, excuse me, more about the beating, and I'm only going to quote the context. Luke chapter 12, verse 46. <coughs> excuse me. It says, That servant will then be punished and thrown out with the servants who cannot be trusted. If servants are not ready or willing to do what their master wants them to do, they will be beaten hard. Moving on to the next one. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. 
it says I don't box by beating my fists in the air the next one it says and let's move to the next verses actually in the Bible that put women under the authority and judgment of man because man in the Bible is clearly the ruler and the Lord of the woman in Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 to the woman he said I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing with pain you will give birth to children your desire will be for your how for your husband and he will rule over you now the Bible allows for rulers and kings to not only punish whom they please but to kill uh, whom they please this is the case in King David according to the Bible for instance killed a messenger for a mere message and we all know why yet David is a blessed person by God the Almighty in the Bible in the Islamic perspective prophets are infallible and no prophet does such act just because he slept with the man's wife prophets peace be up in them all in Islam cannot commit sins and definitely do not commit adultery this is ungodly scripture to accuse King David of such immoral acts and I can even mention also Noah and you know Job but moving on according to the verses I quoted from the Bible I am not saying that a husband is allowed to kill his wife if she defies or defiles him reviles him but certainly him being her ruler gives him a great deal of power and authority over her so why should he be forbidden from disciplining her if she gets out of line the New Testament continues saying 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 now I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is man and the head of Christ is God the head of means the master the Lord one who has authority over her one who is responsible for her also in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 6 and 7 if a woman does not cover her hair or her head she should have her hair cut off and if it, if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or shaved off she should cover her head okay only the daughter could be sold by her father to slavery this is in Exodus 21 verse 7 and 8 and in case a man should sell his daughter as a slave girl she will not go out in the way that the slave man go out and you can continue the verse on your own the man allowed is allowed to cut the woman's hands if she defends her husband in the wrong way this is in Deuteronomy 25 verse 11 and 12 and in case a man struggle together and in case men struggle together in a fight with one another and the wife of the one has near to deliver her husband out of the striking and you know how it goes so the hands of the woman who intercedes in a fight between her husband and another man must be cut off if she touched the other man's junk again that's not beating your wife just chopping her hands off show no mercy the New Testament considers women as filth and that defiles men and this is in Revelation 14 verse 4 those are those men who did not defile themselves with women notice here it says with women for they kept themselves pure note Christians here again lie on this one and claim that the verse is referring to prostitutes that is not what the verse says even if we assume that is what it's meant well uh, uh, that it meant that the fact that it used women which includes all females definitely means that the intent here was to degrade women you can lie and argue endlessly about this but the verse it's very clear the Bible addresses uh, clearly prostitutes in hundreds of, of, of verses throughout the Old and New Testament the verses are countless and I can bring you some yet in this one the word women was chosen it didn't even say bad women no 
It just said women. It clearly refers to to the other verses of the Bible where the uh, the woman, which is Eve, was blamed for kicking mankind out of heaven. Because everything is blamed on women. God the Almighty in the Quran and in Islam, on the other hand, blamed both man and woman, Adam and Eve, and not just Eve. They both shared the blame, not just the woman. In this sense, the Quran is defending women, not degrading women as the Bible. Moreover, the daughter would get burnt alive with fire. Leviticus 21 verse 9 and the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her, her father, she shall be burnt with fire. There are many, many other verses that I could provide, but this should be sufficient enough to prove that the Bible encourages not only the beating and degradation of women, but also encourages slavery and authority over others. It's ironic how... Christians bring up Muslims man uh, Muslim man can beat their wives when in reality they dismiss their own their very own Bible which states if father is allowed to beat and kill his disobedient child in Proverbs 23 verse 13 it says do not withhold discipline in discipline from a child although you strike him with a rod he will not die thou shall uh, thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. Bible says women, uh, kill women, not only beat them. In Deuteronomy 22, verse 20 and 21, kill women who are not virgins on their wedding night. In fact, it's supposed to be a group activity, a public execution done by the men of the city on her father's doorsteps. Since the woman's father, brother, and brothers and husband aren't explicitly excused from participating, they are thereby implicitly expected to participate. So if you wanted to be legalistic about it, that's not really corporal punishment or beating your wife. And since she was in a version, then the marriage is invalid and she's not really your wife. Another one in Deuteronomy 22, it says that if a betrothed virgin is raped within the city walls, but nobody hears her cry out, then she shall be stoned to death. Because, you know, she was asking for it and liked it. If it happened outside the city, then her rapist shall be killed. Another one in Deuteronomy 13 says that you must kill your wife. You must kill kill your wife if she tries to get you to worship any god but the great Jehovah. It says, honey, I could kill you. In fact, Jehovah says, I must kill you. But I am feeling merciful. I'm just going to beat you with a rod no thicker than my thumb. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 5 and 7. Kill men, women, and children. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20 and 26 kill old men and young women shall i continue really we it, it, it's so de degrading for us to get to this point that we start blaming each other because we speak out of knowledge you know we speak with no knowledge you know as you can see domestic violence as defined by today's standards exists in the bible you know, but I just hope that this Christian apologists, when they speak, they speak, uh, bring an argument. You know, I don't mind you speaking about Islam. You know, it's free speech. You know, it's freedom of speech. But bring me an argument and let's talk about it. But when you keep lying and lying and lying about Islam and infecting, you know, hundreds and thousands of other people by your lies, that's not unacceptable. I have a responsibility to respond. You know, as I said, domestic violence as defined by today's standard exists in the Bible. And I would never bring this up if you haven't continued in your lies, not only you, but the rest of the Christian apologists. You know, you ignore what's in your Bible, but yet you haven't 
read a book about Islam, you have never read the Quran, yet you want to act as an, an expert in linguists, an expert in theology. So as we can see, rape is not only encouraged, but commanded by God. In Deuteronomy 21, chapter 10 and 14, it was common to give young women to mobs of angry men to satisfy their sexual lusts. Check out Genesis 19, verse, 9, uh, verse 4 and 8. Check out Judges chapter 19, uh, verse 22 and 26. God commanded the Benjamites, the Benjamites to kidnap and abduct a batch of women, young women actually, for wives. Check out Judges uh, chapter 21 and see also uh, Daughters of Shiloh and Judges uh, verse 21, verse 20 and 21. So men were expected to keep their women and children in line, meaning manage them. You know, it says rule his house, which can easily be used to imply or justify the cause of harsh, violent discipline as indicated in Proverbs uh, before. And you can also check out um, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 and 12. So, in fact, if a man rapes a single girl, which is technically a physical beating and a rape, then his punishment is to marry her. Look out for Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 28. It says, if a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her and they are discovered, he shall pay the girl's father 50 shekels of silver. I simply don't see where the Bible truly prohibits wife beating. It seems clear to me that the Bible looks at the women. And this is very important. And you can, you can do the study for yourself, you know, as someone who belongs only to her husband and that it is none of anyone's business to know or care about. You know, um... Whether the husband beats the woman or not, it's none of anyone's business in the Bible. So, it, it really doesn't matter. This is how the Bible portrays women. The Bible just don't care at all about women. Matter of fact, the evangelicals can rape women and young children and still go to heaven. And they don't even have to repent for these things. So let's play the video and see what else he has to say next. Show me that. Show me in the Bible is not the true God. And I, all of these things you believe in chapter 65, verse 4. And this is where I wanted to get. He's talking to another chapter. Okay. And um, talk in this chapter on divorce. It talks about three category of women that you're allowed to divorce, or that, not that you're allowed, but how to deal with three category of women that you're divorcing. Okay, I'm just gonna let I'm gonna read the verse and let it speak for itself, and you'll see. So, chapter 65, verse four, the chapter of divorce. This is what it says: As for your women who have passed the age of menstruation, in case you do not know, their waiting period is three months. And for those who have not menstruated, there it is three months as well. And as for those who are pregnant, their waiting period ends with delivery. Okay? So, you have three categories of women here. 65-4. They're divorcing women who are too old to menstruate. They're in menopause. So, they're divorcing them. So what is their waiting period when they get divorced? The waiting period is when they're allowed to move on to another man. Okay. Um, their waiting period is three months for a woman who is in menopause that you're divorcing. Okay. The second category of women, it says, and for those who have not menstruated. So let me ask you, you're a woman. Who are the females that have not menstruated? What's up? Response coming up next. <laughs> 